So let's just dive right into this. In order to grow your business, sustainability, scalability, and success, you gotta do three things. Your mind, your marketing, and that M-O-N-E-Y. I like to keep things simple and clear and concise. We've consumed a lot of information, so I hope that by the end of this, you have something to take away and talk about concepts. Well, let's just tackle the thing in the room. Growth is not easy. I'm sure you're here for something. I'm sure you're here to get something that makes sense for you. But there's some hard truths about why you're not growing. Your marketing may not be as good as you think it is. Maybe you're putting a lot of effort internally, but you're not actively listening to what your ideal buyer, your ideal customer is telling you what we need, what we want. You can buy all the tech you want. You can have the most amazing stacks. You can bring in a bunch of amazing new leaders and team members. But if you don't tackle your messaging and your branding and your marketing, the core fundamentals, and I'm not speaking to the choir here, but we all know that hmm, it could be subpar. It could be better. We could be doing better. And it's all about understanding what does that translate into your team internally and how does that translate and how you communicate that externally. But growth is possible. That's why we're here. Because we all want to grow. We all want to make more money. We all want to be more successful. We want to make our businesses you know, excel to astronomical proportions. I always like to say this, progress over perfection. How many of you have ever been stalled because you needed six months to get approval of something? Or you didn't want to launch something because it wasn't perfect in your eyes, there was something messed up, I wasn't sure. Um, you have all this content sitting around, all these notes that you come to different conferences that you don't actively use. Hopefully you use the notes here. It's all about making progress. If I gotta wait for another tech stack, if I gotta wait for another SaaS to come in, if I have to wait for this and that, we're never gonna get anywhere. And the people that get there first, the people that people are aware of, are the movers and shakers. It's kind of like social audio. Even though Twitter Spaces is here and is you know, prominent, everyone's gonna say, well, remember Clubhouse? They stuck out more. We had Green Room and a whole bunch of things I don't even wanna list in there. But it's all about making that progress, making that step. And progress is impossible without change. It's been echoed throughout this entire conference. The pandemic forced us to change. But did we change to adapt, always do all possible things to fit what our customers, what our audience, and even what our internal teams need? Have we made the necessary changes for our marketing teams, for our tech, for our sales team, for everyone involved, our web dev? We don't want to miss anybody out. We have to embrace change, otherwise we can't do anything. So a little bit about me, I'm a lawyer and growth marketing strategist. I'm kind of known as a strategy hacker. It is trademark, by the way. I love Twitter, so you can catch me at Twitter. I find sure I tweet like rants all day long about marketing struggles and, and issues and whatnot. And I'm an author of Strategize Up. Three-time agency builder, two-time CMO, a lot of fun stuff that I'm sure a quick Google uh, or link could, could, uh, LinkedIn could tell you what it is. So I'm not going to bore you about the details about what it all means. But let's talk about pillar number one, your mindset. Developing a growth mindset to scale your business. This is stuff you already, already know. Do you know the right KPIs, the right OKRs, the right metrics that are moving the needle forward in your business? Now, we can go around the room and feel like we're just going to announce all the data and everything else, but does it make sense? Does it matter? Are you really tracking those key indicators, or are you just showing up and just listening here are the numbers for the week, for the day, for the month? Know your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. Not just for the business, but for your team, for your individuals. If I know so-and-so is really good at this, but they're not really good at that, maybe I should reconsider how I'm using this individual. Sure, they ha it's, on their, and it's in their job description. Sure, they know how to use the software. Sure, they can do it. But these small little things could actually make a big impact on your margins month, year on end if you don't consider and know your team, your strengths and weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. And honestly, a lot of the threats come down to we're resistance to change because we're in denial that we need to change in the first place. Look, I got through this certification. I came to this conference. I did this. I checked it off the list. I did it. I'm good. And we're not thinking in the terms of optimization, always being aware that in any moment, the bridge could break and we have to adapt and modify again. So really, it's important not to know your SWAT just for yourself, for your team, for your business, 
but also your audience, who you're trying to talk to, your clients, your customers. What are they struggling with? What are they dealing with? And lastly, we must be in flow, as all the other presentations kind of echo, but be data-driven. Now, it sounds hypocritical to say, you know, know your right metrics, but be data-driven, but be in flow. And I always to say this, the human element is hard to find in the data. You can be obsessed over everything in the data, but sometimes element X, the human data, is a little bit different. And you've got to really look between the lines to get there. So how to ignite your growth mindset? Full transparency, I'm a big mnemonics and acronym guy. It's easy to understand. It's easy to process. And so I would just leave you with a few things to take off with that. The first thing I want to talk about is Clover. Are you clear about your goals? Are you clear about your why? Have you talked to your team and asked them, what's your goals? Why are you here? I'm here to make money. I'm here to work and do this. Let's go a little bit deeper than that. Because if you can create a harmony that makes sense for your team, that productivity is going to be up. And that's going to make your numbers go up. And that means everyone's happy. It's the small things. It's the little things. But be clear about your goals. Really define them. What does that look like for this week, for this month? What are your goals after leaving this conference? I don't know about any of you, you'll take all these notes, you meet everyone here, and then you don't touch the notes for three months, and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Set a goal even for, as I'm leaving this conference, who I need to talk to, put a deadline to it, and go for it. Sometimes we get stuck in that only with who we're trying to talk about audiences, but nothing else. Make sure you do that for yourself. Leverage your time and resources wisely. Is that new expensive SaaS really helping you? Are you really maximizing the features? of what you're trying to do? Are you really leveraging your time? Are you really leveraging your people? And you have to be just honest with yourself. The next thing, never stop optimizing your process. I think leverage and optimization come hand in hand. Leverage your community, leverage your people around you, but then always be in a state of optimization. I never think I arrive. I'm always just going to the next level. When I'm always thinking I'm going to the next level, that humbles me down and I always think I can make moves. If I think I've arrived, I get lackadaisical. I get lazy, and I'm not leaning in, and I'm not in the, the right mindset to achieve what I'm meant to achieve. Manifest your vision and exchange value. Now, Troy, 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 what is the difference between clarity and vision? To be clear is to define your goal. To have that vision is to manifest what it looks like. What does it feel like to be successful? What does it feel like to get one billion ARR, what does that feel like? Whatever your goal is, what does that feel like to you, to your team? How do we want to earn it? Yes, I want a championship. I want to earn it a certain way. So it's very important to have that clarity, but also have that vision. And have that vision. How many of you have heard you have to give value to your customers and your audience? Have, have anyone ever heard that? Are you making sure, though, that you're getting enough value back to yourself? I think the topic of mental health has been very important, very critical to maintaining your team's morale moving the needle, moving everything forward. Make sure that you're receiving enough value back into your well. Because if you're just giving, 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 and you're not getting anything back, you're going to deteriorate. The next one is execute. It's nothing, nothing new here. You've got to actually make things happen. You have to do. It requires an action for you to be successful, for you to achieve in your marketing, your sales, whatever the spectrum might be. But many times we get stuck at not executing because, oh, well, I need this tool. I need this, I need that. Again, progress over perfection. I would rather do and get better at doing than to not do anything at all because I need all these things that I have even proven, has been proven to even work in my behalf or for me. And so it sounds a lot of psychological things and just woo, woo but it's not. It's more so constructive concepts that when you look at your team, your tactics, everything you're doing is at an alignment with Clover. And lastly, obviously we need to get that results. We can do all these things, but if we're not getting results, there's no validation. There's no proof. Now, the reason Clover framework is in a circle is that you could be clear about your goals and you could be getting results. But guess what? Your team is burnt out. Guess what? Your marketing is doing good this month, but the next two quarters is going to drop and it's not even going to work anymore because you're not optimizing and not listening. You're not leveraging your community to make sure, are we in the right situation? The data is telling me we're good right now. But tomorrow, everything's in chaos again. It might have been avoided if we made sure we were all in flow the entire time. So clarity is essential to know what moves you need to make. And just to ask yourself, what was your intentions of coming here? And ask yourself, 
Did you get what you came here for? If you didn't, what could you have done differently? Sometimes people get a little awkward, a little weird when it comes to clarity, because it requires you to ask questions that you normally wouldn't ask. You just, well, I go because I go. I go because of this, because someone paid me for it, because my team went, because I know I'm gonna learn something. What are you gonna do with that knowledge? Get, be clear about that. Are you leveraging everything available to you to be successful? If you're here, that shows you're one to leverage more knowledge and understanding of different individuals to help you grow and scale in some capacity. Maybe one word sparks an idea that creates a campaign that brings in a whole bunch of new um, clients or customers. Who knows? But nothing works perfectly. Therefore, optimization is always essential to make the moves you need to make. I can't stress this enough. I don't care how successful you are, how high you rise to the ranks. I've been a CMO twice. And I've always been humbled by culture. I've always been humbled by the community, by the audience, by the customer, because the wheel and the demand changes. And so I always need to be in flow and moving. And you must have vision of what success looks like. I've already echoed that. And make sure that the value matches that vision. People want to be a part of that community. If you look at Web3, NFTs, different things that are coming up now that maybe a lot of people aren't as familiar with as of yet, they've gotten that traction because of community because people see the vision, they align with the vision, and they're getting value back. They've echoed about memberships, they've echoed about different things like that. In the same way, with how you approach your marketing, with how you position your business, you have to find that exchange that you're getting enough value back, and that the vision is very clear and concise for everyone to talk about. I think Andy even talked about the beginning, the first session um, today, talking about your UX UI experience. How does it look? Are you very clear about your word choices? It may seem very obvious to you, because you're deep in the stuff, but it may be completely oblivious to your next customer. The small changes can make a big difference. And obviously success can exist unless you execute. No question there. You have to execute, you gotta do. You can't be complacent, you can't be hesitant. When you're clear, hey, we can always make modifications. The quick story as I was driving here, there's a thing coming from Schaumburg at 15A and I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm, on, I'm, I'm a converted Illinois driver, I'm originally from Northwood, Indiana. And I'm driving in, and I'm like, I'm gonna get all the way to the exit and just jump in. I always hit it maybe 85, 95% of the time. This time I did it. I'm like, oh, I missed my exit. What am I gonna do? Well, I kept going and get to the next one. Actually, I got here faster, learned a whole new route that I didn't know before. And it's just all about making sure that you still find that way to execute. Because it sounds silly that if I miss my exit, I'm still gonna come to the event because that one specific way didn't work or didn't work the way I wanted to? No, I'm still in the flow of execution. Then the effectiveness of effort is only determined by the results it generates. So your ROI, your revenue, your retention. But I like to say another thing, respect. I want people to respect the work that you put in, the business, the effort, the marketing, it all has to be in flow and that comes out of respect. When they know that your team, your organization can deliver, when your clients, your customers know that they can deliver, they get that next currency of respect. And respect goes a long way. It's pretty powerful, pretty dynamic. Pillar number two, activate a growth marketing strategy for your business through marketing. First thing you need to do, be direct. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little awkward up here. But you know what? Besides me relishing in the awkwardness, I don't wanna be direct about it, why? Because it takes away the awkwardness in the room. It's like, okay, he's addressed it, here we are. I'll be direct about it. I'm here to help, I'm here to strategize, I'm here to do what I do. Many times we live in this bubble where we just think we're saying the right words because our competitors are saying these keywords, these buzzwords, and that's what I should say. How many of you ever had your, well, you don't have to snitch and raise your hand, had a, a exact, uh, direct report saying, hey, I saw this competitor do this, we should totally do that. And you're like, oh, no, no, that doesn't land. That doesn't align with what we're trying to do. But you do need to be direct about what you want, how you want to make that money, how you want them, the customer to go through the sales pipeline, through the customer journey and everything else. But actually be authentic in who you are. I can only get so far by looking at my competitors. I can only go so far by looking at what they're doing, how they're doing, looking at the data. I have to be authentic and true to myself because the human element respects that. The next thing, be resourceful with your how. I don't agree that we can't. I think we just need to figure out what can we do right now and what can we do later or what do we need to plan and do later. It's all about alignment with the execution. And lastly, be tactical with your movements. Everything still needs to be in flow. When the pandemic hit, either you adjusted, adapt, always do all possible things, 
or the company dies. It didn't work, plain and simple. Yes, we're coming out of the pandemic. Yes, you know, we're getting the, we're in person, we're doing all these environments and everything's working again, but we still have to be tactical with our movements even now. You don't have to raise your hands on this, but how many of you, when you met someone here, you asked them immediately, what do you do? Versus maybe asking, you know, how are you doing? What's your goal of coming here? And I admit, that's the ingrained question that you ask. What do you do? And I thought about it. The name tag, their name, their title, their company, it's all on the name tag. If I switch and maybe ask a more provocative uh, a question that parks their interest more, we can have a more monumental moment here that then could lay, lead to a conversation later that I can learn all the ins and outs. And the same with your customer, buy this right now, buy this right now, do this, do that. Are you leveraging the language that makes sense for them? And I'm gonna to get to that a little bit later. So again, be direct, be authentic, be resourceful, and be tactical. Ask, challenge, tell, and entertain. You hear everyone talking about you gotta be a good storyteller. Yes, you have to be a great storyteller and in entertaining them, but you also have to educate them on why your product, why your service matters. Why should I choose you over somebody else? Is, do we know that the pain point's gonna be from costs or that we don't know you in the industry or the marketplace yet? What is it? And then are you authentic in and out? Your biggest advocates are your teammates, your employees, your existing customer base. If we're so focused on who we don't have and we don't take care of what we do have, we're not in a sustainable model system. And I'd rather be in a sustainable model system that I know I have a good sturdy ground to stand on than be on pegs and needles trying to get to an arbitrary number that can collapse at any moment. Again, know your SWAT, cap us on that, I've already echoed that. And then active strategies, build systems that are gonna work for you, but make sure that you're tactical in your flow and delivery. The five C's of generating growth, from my own conceptual thoughts, is consideration, communication, connection, consistency, and community. If you're not getting the results that you want, you're failing at one of those things, at least. Easy. Just because you schedule your content out, just because you have CRM's platform, just because you send out daily newsletters and emails, all these different things, just because you create a ton of videos and everything else, doesn't mean that it's gonna convert and do what you need it to do. We have to make sure that we're, we are being productive, but we're being efficient, that we're actually making things happen. Which are, these are more so like concepts. You're not giving me like deadline, one, two, three things, and then boom, here I am, I'm gonna get you know, 10 new clients, or I'm gonna get a you know, million dollars in new revenue by you know, two weeks from now, whatever, get a new client, customer, or whatever on the, call, on the phone call. But it's these fundamentals that if you apply to your process, to how you deliver marketing and strategy and different things like that, is really gonna determine how far successful you get when things go haywire. I always have to say this, using the past method to scale. This, people I think sometimes associate marketing and sales a little bit different, but I like to see them as my right arm and my left arm. And no matter what, I need to present the information. I don't wanna tell you what to do. I wanna present the information and give you the opportunity of choice. How many of you are a big Matrix fan? I still haven't seen the, the fourth one yet. I don't know, I'm in denial about it. <laughs> but in the same way, you wanna present them an option of choice. That gives them the freedom and the power to feel like, ooh, okay, I still have some type of control here. I don't wanna feel trapped. I wanna give them an option of choice. So I wanna present the information. Use words that are carefully crafted to make sure that it comes off as we're not forcing you down a rabbit hole. But if, hey, if you wanna be Alice in Wonderland for today, Go ahead, let's have a conversation. Ask questions. When we made everyone here, what was the first thing we do? We ask questions. I wanna get to know you. Basic, basic psychology, basic human need. Ask me questions. I may know what I need, but I need some props. I need someone to help me get to where I need to go. Share what others are saying. I always say there's enough room for all of us in the sky to fly. And if you're just an echo chamber of your own thoughts, of what only you think, that gets boring real quick. People get burned down, they get tired of it. Why are they not opening my emails no more? My community numbers are really bad. My membership is going down. My marketing really isn't as effective. It's because you're not articulating things beyond just yourself. To connect what you're doing, what your mission statement is, your belief system is, to other things that are in tangent, that are in parallel to what you're trying to achieve. That gives you this global experience and shows that you're all about the community just be, you know, beyond just yourself. And the last thing you gotta 
You got to sway. How many of y'all need to just, sometimes y'all got to just sway. Sway with your content. Sway with your strategy. People really, I, I, it's silly. It sounds silly. But in a lot of cases, we're so stuck on we have to do it this way because our report system says we have to. This is the thing we have to do. But it's very obvious if we don't make a right turn, we're going to go off the cliff. And I got to sway. Sometimes it's not about leading by data. It's leading by common sense, being awareness of what, this is what our audience is telling us. This is what they're screaming to us. But we're too stuck in this way. And that's a problem. That's a problem in marketing. That's a problem in sales, a problem in business. But when you apply paths, it allows you the fluidity to encompass other people to help you sway, to help you grow, and many things like that. Pillar three, increasing your business gap. Growth, authority, and profitability. One thing I've been echoing out, and I'm going to really dive in deep really quick on this moment, is leveraging language to launch. It would be really sorry if I started speaking a different language that no one in this room understood, but what I was saying was the very thing you needed, the very recipe you needed to get to the goal of why you came here. But Troy, I don't understand you because you're speaking a totally different language. Are you speaking the right language to your community, to your audience? Is your internal team saying the same thing? How are your Zoom meetings? You don't have to raise your hands on that. Would you rate them as efficient or just blocks that aren't really moving the needle at all? How are your communication? How are your conversations? Seriously, look at the language. Is it making sense? Well, Troy, we've done all these different landing pages. We've done all these FEACs. Yes, I get it. You've done check mark and check mark and check mark for days. And it could be the most obvious thing. We're saying the wrong thing. It doesn't make sense to our ideal audience or customer, or we've said these words to get us to this point, but to this next level of growth, it's not working anymore. But we're so stuck on this method because maybe we don't want to learn anything new. Or maybe we honestly have to be real with ourselves and haven't took the time and effort to listen, active listening to what people are saying. Or we need a translator to translate to the audience we're trying to get to, so make sure we're regurgitating the right language back. Very obvious, but many businesses, many marketing campaigns are missing it, not by an inch, by a mile, simply by the words that they choose. Are we going to blame the web dev because the language of the button just doesn't work? There's so many things that we didn't think about. The next thing is educate and entertain to enchant. At this point, many people would say that, you know, if you look at how many of you are CEOs, you don't have to raise your hand on this one, you know, look at the Gary Vee's of the world, Grant Cardone's like, yeah, I want to create a ton of content, let's just go. And got to be entertaining. That's great. But we got to find, you know, using the right language to make sure that the content that we're creating is entertaining, yes, but also educational. Sometimes we'll be on one spectrum where it's too heavy on education and it doesn't have enough swagger. It doesn't connect. And when people say, you know, they want to blame, you know, different age groups and different, you know, things. No, culture literally determines how we consume, where we consume, and how and where. So you have to make sure that you're doing those right things. So are you educating and entertaining in a way that enchants their heart? Anytime that you have a conversation where maybe you're courting your partner, things like that, there's a moment where, a monumental moment where you got their heart. And they're going to remember that. It's the same thing in business. Every customer, every client, it's not a one and zero. There's a human behind that. And I think sometimes we forget that. I think the pandemic showed that even more, that we do need to uh, incorporate more Humaniz humanization into our market, into our strategy, and not just be data only centered and just hope for the best. I'm going to just move these. These are people and make sure that we understand that accordingly. The next thing is to attract and amplify to activate. How many of you heard the phrase, if you build it, they will come? Well, I'm going to just be really evil for a minute. And I think that's the biggest lie I've told in business. So if you have the best thing since sliced bread and it's sitting there, I'm just supposed to know what's there? No, I don't. You got you to gotta give me something. You got to bring me back in. I know I'm a person that fluctuates my voice a lot. Maybe that'd be strategic. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's my character. And that's my way to do a check pulse and see if you're still with me here. But my thing is, you got to make sure that you're doing that. You got to make sure that you're bringing in the right people. You're creating this environment, this space that people identify with the lighthouse, like, I want to go to it. But also, once they get there, I have to 
amplify my message. And the best way to amplify your message is to not just do your own thing with community and communications, but to allow, empower those who are with you, who are your customers, who are your ideal buyers, to also tell your message, tell your story. Does your marketing include allowing other people who see it to share it? Simple things. That means I don't have to spend any ad dollars on it. They can just go. One thing I think about when people push out content and they add a lot of ad dollars behind it and hope for the best is that if it's poop, doesn't matter. It's still poop. Make sure that you're using the right language. Make sure that your content makes sense to your ideal customer and buyer. Make sure that it's equipped and positioned and presented in a way that keeps my attention, but also make sure that I can share it if it makes sense to me, that maybe these are all these people that we didn't even think about in our customer analyzation, our audience profiles, that if they have the opportunity to share, we're going to have a whole new trend of revenue, a whole new expansion of our community base. There's a multitude of opportunities, but we're missing the mark because we're not equipping it the right way. How many of you are Marvel fans in here? How many of you are Star Wars fans in here? Are you just saying that because? No, I'm just <laughs> so when you think about the multitude of matters, I haven't seen it yet, so don't spoil it for me. There's infinite opportunities and possibilities that even beyond the most deep on things of data is going to miss something. We're going to miss something. Just be honest. I don't care. You're always going to miss something. There's a human looking at the data, and there's a human that you're quantifying as data. And in both cases, they can't process every single moment, every single thing that you think, and the perception could be off. But we need to make sure that when we get to these conversations, that we're in alignment, that it makes sense. I'll add these last two in here because I think it's very important. I think dreaming big and distinguishing yourself to drive creates that mission impact. It allows people to understand your why on a deeper level. I can't grow if I can't dream big. Why would I limit myself because of what I'm seeing right now in the present versus what I can visualize, materialize, and create in the future? If you're a marketer of one or a sales team of few, doesn't mean you won't stay like that forever. I want to create and build a system and an opportunity to allow me to scale, to allow me to grow the business, the organization, the department, the way I want to, the way I see fit. Well, Troy, how does this matter in business? How does this help me make more money? I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But I really think when you dream big and then you accompany that with distinguishing yourself, it allows you the opportunity for people to really identify what you're about. It allows them to see, I get you. I understand. Now, Originally, I was going to come up here with a hoodie. That's my normal. My, my get up is a hoodie and a blazer and some kicks. And I'm like, bam, I'm here. But it's kind of hot outside, and I wanted to make sure I didn't die on stage. But I knew that that was my go to look. That's my go to thing. What's your go to look in your business? What's your go to look with your team? I think about way, way back when I used to work at Walmart. You know, I even worked at FedEx and other, and other things when I was going through college and different things like that. They'd always try to create a champ create a moment that our team is different, this is why. Why do they do that? Just to make you feel cool? Psychologically, it's also about making sure that we know who our team is and we represent them. This is who we are. This is what we're about. This is our why. This is what we do. How often do we do that when we're trying to distinguish ourselves and make it very clear for our customer base, for our audience? Do we do that enough, honestly? Probably not. Could we do it more? Yeah. Well, Troy, we don't have time for that. We got to focus on analyzing the data more that's been proven that doesn't work. There's nothing else to look for in that. Let's understand where we're trying to make our shifts and moves. And lastly, share frequently and support often to shine. I've echoed that before. There's enough room for all of us in the sky to fly, right? I've echoed that before. But we don't share enough. We don't share enough that matters to our customer. But guess what? Our customers, hate to be the bearer of bad news, are not obsessed with us like we are. We're in it, the trenches every single day. They have multiple loves. They have multiple things that they want. At any moment, their interest can be gone. Not all of us can be marvels. Not all of us can just be, have the obsession of the world at our, at our fingertips every day. As much as maybe your boss or CEO may want to and want to apply certain marketing campaigns, that's not realistic. But what is realistic is that we can build a community that understands us, that wants to help us, that wants to make that impact. But we have to do these things according to make it work. The future of growth is with an E. Embrace the four E's to scale and grow in this new digital world and social media era. 
The four E's are engagement, exclusivity, experience, and emotion. How many of you in marketing or in sales have heard the five P's? Product, place, yes. I would beg to differ that those, those are still relevant. I think the four E's now, especially since the pandemic, has caused that shift. We've echoed this, I've heard the word constantly used throughout this day, experience, experience. And not just UX, UI. Are you really creating that experience internally to reap the results that you want? If you came here and you wanted a certain experience, maybe the ads, everything, the things, the tickets are paid for, you come here, you're sitting in the seats, are you getting the experience that you want? Am I delivering the experience that you expected? I don't know. You can keep your thoughts to yourself. Or maybe you can tell me. I'd love to know with feedback and a review. But funny or not, the goal is to make sure that you're creating that experience that makes sense, that lands. And if you don't listen, if you don't leverage like what you want, if you don't educate and entertain to enchant, you can't create that experience because you don't know what they need. You don't know what they want. Get out of the silo. Get out of the echo chamber. Get out in the light and hear. What are they saying? Exclusivity. Everybody wants to be a part of a tribe. They want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. They want to be a part of that mission. I always ask this question, I think about this. When I think of NGOs and nonprofits during the pandemic, how did they stay in business if they weren't you know, top NGOs? They created the community and they had exclusivity. That there's something that they're doing that no one else is doing that needs to stay in the community. And so people, even though things may be tight, Things are going to be hard during that pandemic, especially the first in 2020. They still donated. They still gave what they had to maintain them because they know where their mission is exclusive to those individuals. Don't you think for profits can have that same magic sauce? If they took the moment to understand and identify where does that alignment is for exclusivity, not just in another membership they can pay for, but a membership that makes sense to create these other opportunities that maybe isn't even seen on the data. There's only so much data I can get from a human. There's, even though we live on our phones, we take them to even the bathroom. There's only so much data we're going to get off of them. There's some times that we just have to trust that, that we understand them on a human level. That goes beyond what the data says. And we echo that and assure that and validate that in our marketing, in our sales, in our conversations, in our deliverables. That makes sense for them. Emotion. Yes, we have to leverage the language, but are we giving the right emotion? How would it feel if I said, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Y'all probably wonder if I'm on the south side right now. The, the, the answer could be the same way, but the tone, the emotion changes the whole dynamic of the experience. So are you echoing the right emotion when you're trying to get them to buy, to get the client to say yes, to get that new big client that you haven't gotten before, to achieve that new MMR, that new ARR? Are you triggering the right emotional triggers? These simple things are the things that you need to have the more conversations about when you're reviewing the numbers, when you're talking with your teams. I get it. It sounds just more superficial. It sounds more obvious. But if it was so obvious, why are we still not getting our goals? Why are we still not hitting our numbers? Why are we still stuck on, well, you know, before the pandemic, we only had to do these things and it worked out perfectly. Yeah, the world changed. Either you're going to adapt to it, always do all possible things, or perish from it. But we also have to give ourselves some grace and understand that we're in this state of optimization and modification and change, that change does require a little bit of suffering, a little bit of pain, because it's not something that we're used to. I'm not here to tell you, well, if you're not on TikTok by now, you lost out. That's like saying, if you're not in the NFT world, Web3 world right now, you lost out. I'm not telling you that. I am saying, don't be so close-minded to look at and consider what could be. Just because we don't know it yet, or maybe someone on our team doesn't know it yet, or maybe someone in our marketing has a certain way that they've done things to get to this point, but it hasn't worked in the last six months to go even further, allow yourself to give yourself the opportunity to consider changes. That takes time. It takes energy. It takes a little bit of effort, modifications, all those things, but it's all necessary. Because if we just keep doing the same thing that we're doing, and it's not working, you're on a hamster wheel. And you're not going anywhere, but you're putting all this effort, all this energy, burning all this money on marketing ad campaigns and sales dollars and hires, all this, and you're not looking at the bigger picture. What is our audience telling us? What are they screaming? And we're missing the mark because we're so, hey, 
Our following count is humongous on Twitter and LinkedIn. That's been our tried and true platforms for the last 10 years, however long you've been in business, or however long you've been on your career path. Maybe your ideal customers for tomorrow have migrated over to something else. And maybe because you haven't considered the data and the information and from other people, hmm, I'm not sure. So sometimes when I come to these conferences, yeah, I'm a marketer. I know what these acronyms mean. We're not going to talk about that. But someone could say something a slightly different way that I never heard before, and then it clicks for me. Oh, I should do that. Boom, money. Boom, success. Boom, growth. Allow your marketing, allow your sales, allow your messaging to create that experience internally and externally. I get a lot of conversations with potential clients and existing clients where they tell me all the list of things that they're doing. And it's a long list. It's great. It's awesome. They don't call me in if they're not getting the growth that they want. And the biggest thing that they're doing is they're not, they're in the silos. They're not talking to each other. They're not understanding the four E's. They're not seeing the engagement. They're not seeing the exclusivity. They're not creating the experience internally, which translates and exhibits out externally. If your sales or marketing team aren't nurtured, aren't given the tools, the ammunition to do their job in a, in a really significant way, it's going to be terrible. Sorry, it's not going to work. Just put another human in the seat and say, go do it, isn't enough if you're not equipping them with the right things, the right tools. But if you can't articulate your experience in a way that makes sense, how are they supposed to sell it? How am I supposed to sell it? So understanding the four E's is the future of marketing, is the future of sales, is the future of business. Conviction plus commitment plus consistency plus confidence creates opportunities. Sometimes you only get one shot. If you're not confident in your positioning, in your branding, in your marketing, in your messaging, I always like to add myself, every time I come on the stage, if that slideshow goes off and there's blank on that screen, am I confident that I can still say what I need to say? The pandemic shook us to the core. So we should be more confident in how we're going to conduct our marketing how are we going to conduct our sales and our messaging to create sustainable business? Well, Charlie, you said all these acronyms, you said all these mnemonics, you said all these things in sociology, psychology, whatever. How does that help me scale and be sustainable growth? I premise by saying I'm a big concepts guy. I think that's pretty clear. It's pretty obvious by now. I'm not going to give you 10 steps to do this. You can get that on the internet. I'm not going to give you that. What I am, my goal is intention from this presentation was to incur an idea, a thought. Maybe I'm looking at it just slightly differently, and I need to embrace something differently. The concepts, the clovers of the world, the darts, and the leads are just check marks to make sure that, am I looking at this the right? Maybe I need to put this in a different situation environment and see what lands, see what sticks. I deal with a lot of, talk a lot of SMBs who maybe don't have the marketing know-how that maybe many of you in this room have, but they know they need to market better. I can't talk to them in a high-level marketing jargon. I have to make it simple. I have to make it in a way that they can understand. They understand Clover. They don't know maybe the optics of it, but they know how it works. They understand Dart. Okay, I need to be direct. I need to be authentic, resourceful, and tactical. Cool, bet I can do that. But that could be the core fundamentals of just a really solid marketing campaign. But in the same way with your audience, the people you're trying to get the money from, the people that you're trying to be you know, uh, helpful with, are you doing that same thing? Are you creating that same experience for them? And the last thing I want to echo with these <laughs> conviction, commitment, consistency, and confidence, it does create opportunities because when someone's confident, it could be an ugly outfit. But man, that confidence, it's not bad on them. You could have a really bad marketing campaign. You could maybe have a really off day in sales. But because you were authentic in that moment, you knew the mission and you tied the story to it they want to choose you over somebody else. Maybe who even has more team, more staff, more tech, all these things. So if you apply this, it will create opportunities. Now, it's a matter of time, it's a matter of will, all that stuff. Obviously, testing is efficient and testing is essential. But even beyond that, there's some things that sometimes I don't need to test. My audience already tells me what it is. It's very obvious. I don't need to have millions and millions of data checkpoints to tell me, this isn't working anymore, and we need to make a shift. We need to move. That's my presentation. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to share now.